Chickens provide meat, eggs, income and manure for many smallholder farmers. But chickens are prone to many diseases. Newcastle disease is the biggest killer of chickens worldwide. Once chickens get sick with Newcastle disease, there's no treatment and all flocks in a village can die. Once Newcastle disease has attacked the chickens, even if we get the veterinarian it doesn't help, the chickens eventually die because it's too late once the disease is seen. In this video, we'll learn how to recognize Newcastle disease and the signs, causes, prevention, control and management of this devastating disease. Newcastle disease can affect the brain, breathing system including lungs and guts of chicken and other poultry. So how can you know that a chicken is sick with Newcastle disease? Let's listen to some farmers in southern Malawi and find out how they recognize Newcastle disease in their poultry. We know that a chicken has Newcastle disease when its stool becomes green and sticks to the feathers. It's not difficult to detect. When we look at the inside of its wings, we see green lines. The chicken sneezes, and when it's let out, it usually stays in one place and hardly moves. We can catch it very easily, because its legs are weak. If the brain is affected, the neck can be twisted and the wings paralyzed. Newcastle disease can be severe and all the chickens in the flock can die. Sometimes it's less severe and only a few die, but many become sick. Now we know how to recognize Newcastle disease, let us find out what causes it. Newcastle disease is caused by a tiny germ called a virus that's spread by sick chickens and other birds, or by people who've handled sick chickens. It spreads quickly, and remember, it can kill your entire flock. If someone tells you they have a herb or drug which cures Newcastle disease, they're wrong. Many farmers have tried to cure chickens of Newcastle disease using traditional medicines, but most will tell you that those medicines have little effect. Newcastle disease can only be prevented, not cured. Now that we know how dangerous Newcastle disease is, how can we prevent the disease? Some people protect their chickens by keeping them away from all other birds. But in most villages, this isn't possible. The only fully effective way to prevent Newcastle disease is to vaccinate your chickens. Before, I was not vaccinating my chickens and all my chickens died. From that time, I've learned a lesson and started vaccinating. I invite the veterinary officers to vaccinate my chickens so they're protected throughout the year. I've learned that if you don't protect your chickens from Newcastle disease, many will die when the disease comes. Vaccination against Newcastle disease helps to build immunity in the chicken before it's attacked. A vaccinated chicken has a strong defense and does not get sick if Newcastle disease tries to attack. However, the vaccine cannot protect your chicken immediately. It takes about a week to be effective. So if the chicken already has Newcastle disease at the time of vaccination, it will die before it has time to build up its defense. When Newcastle disease attacks the chicken, a week or more after vaccination, it will probably not get sick. Different types of vaccines for Newcastle disease exist. Always follow the instructions from the manufacturers on how to store and administer the vaccine. Even if the name of the vaccine is the same, the instructions may differ depending on the manufacturer. 
In this video, we'll learn how the Lassota and I2 vaccines are used in Malawi to protect chickens against Newcastle disease. If you use either of these vaccines, keep them in a fridge between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, it won't be effective when given to your chickens. If you're transporting I2 vaccine to the field, it's best to carry it with ice inside a small container to keep it cool. If the vaccine is thermostable, which means that its effectiveness is not significantly reduced when subject to higher temperatures for short periods of time, then you can also wrap the vaccine in a wet cloth and carry it in an open weave basket. The open weave allows air to flow through and cool the wet cloth, which then keeps the vaccine cool. Always check the instructions on the vaccine bottle. If you're going to use the Lasota vaccine, make sure your chickens are thirsty. The diluted Lasota vaccine has to be consumed within two hours, as it is a live vaccine and is not thermostable. Remove all water containers the night before the vaccination. Then in the morning, the poultry should not have access to water at all for two hours. If possible, you can give them dry feed. This ensures they'll be thirsty and will drink the medicated water. For a better absorption of the vaccine, add one tablespoon of skim milk powder, or even fresh milk, into five liters of water. Dilute the entire Lesotho vaccine according to the instructions on the bottle. Open the vaccine bottle under the water so all the vaccine is used. There's no overdose on the vaccine. Therefore use all the diluted vaccine, even if the doses shown on the bottle are more than your chickens. Divide the medicated water into different containers and place them at different areas. This way you ensure that all birds will drink. You can also use a dropper or syringe to give the Lesotho vaccine individually to birds. Whilst this is a good method as you're certain that all birds have been vaccinated. You have to make sure that the vaccine is given within the two hours after dilution. Beyond the two hours, the vaccine will become ineffective. The I2 vaccine does not need to be mixed with water. You can use it straight from the plastic dropper bottle. To vaccinate, put a drop in one eye of each chicken. With one small bottle of I2 vaccine, you can vaccinate up to 200 chickens. During sunny or hot days, the best time to administer the vaccine is in the morning when it's still cool because the vaccine may not be effective if it gets warm. It's best to vaccinate birds in a shaded area. When you've finished, pour any remaining vaccine in a pit latrine and burn or bury the empty vaccine bottle. Wash and clean the spoon and other utensils that were used during the vaccination. If you have only a few chickens, buying a whole small bottle of I2 or Lesotho can be expensive. In Malawi, farmers who only have a few chickens vaccinate as a group to reduce costs. Do not use vaccines past their use-by date, or vaccines that have been left out in warm conditions, as they won't be effective and your chickens will not be protected. The benefit of buying the vaccine with a group is that it's cheaper and easier because everyone makes a small contribution until the amount is enough to buy a bottle of the vaccine. 
When we've vaccinated all our chickens, Newcastle disease does not come again in our village. And that's the benefit. Each family benefits because the flocks will not get sick from Newcastle disease anymore. As the protection from the vaccine decreases over time, you must vaccinate again about every four months. It's good to vaccinate all village chickens at the same time in order to reduce incidences of Newcastle disease in your area. The vaccine protects the chickens only against Newcastle disease and not against any other diseases. Chickens which have been vaccinated can still die of other diseases. The vaccine does not harm humans or chickens. If chickens get sick or die following vaccination, the cause is not the vaccine, but it's possible that the chickens were already infected with Newcastle disease when the vaccination was done. The vaccine does not kill chickens, nor does it alter the taste of the meat. Apart from vaccination, you should always aim to prevent the spread of Newcastle disease by following good practices. When we bring a chicken from another village or when we buy one at the market, we kill it immediately because it may already be infected by Newcastle disease. When we kill it, we throw the feathers and the intestines in the pit latrine or we bury the chicken in the soil. We do this so that healthy chickens do not get infected. To prevent various diseases, ensure that the rooms where the chickens roost at night are clean. Unclean houses harbour germs, ticks and other insects. Every morning sweep the chicken house and make sure the house is dry. If the house has a cement floor, sweep it and then pour some water and mop it so the floor is dry. A dry floor reduces the chance that the chickens get infected by disease, including Newcastle disease. There are traditional methods of building up resistance to diseases in poultry, but these will never be as effective as vaccination. We protect our chickens from Newcastle disease by mixing aloe vera with soot from the kitchen fire. We then add leaves of a shrub called ntutu, which is found in the bush and dilute it with water and give the chickens to drink. So what should you do if you notice that one of your chickens is sick with Newcastle disease? The answer is remove the chicken and kill it straight away and bury or burn it at a place where it cannot infect other chickens. Keep the remaining chickens inside so they cannot meet with outside chickens and vaccinate them. This reduces the risk of spreading the disease. And if the worst happens and your chickens die of Newcastle disease? When a chicken dies, we dig a pit and bury it to protect the remaining chickens. We bury it so that dogs will not pick up the dead chicken and spread the disease to the neighbours or to another village. Be aware that a chicken that survives Newcastle disease is like a chicken that has been vaccinated but it has to be revaccinated every four months.